In the months since we visited the Rollins family, that dream appears to have come at least partially true. Emily's mom, Erica, wrote to tell us that on her very first day of CBD treatment, Emily suffered just seven seizures, six of which lasted a split second. She's since gone as long as 20 hours without a seizure. I am in awe and feel like this is a dream, Erica wrote to us. We have high hopes, no pun intended, that this will be our miracle. Dr. Ben Wally has been studying the connection between CBD and epilepsy at the University of Reading in the UK and joins us now by Skype to explain what's going on. Thanks for uh, joining us, Dr. Wally. It's a pleasure. So I guess first off, we have a couple anecdotal stories of this working. Do we believe in a, in a larger way, more broadly, that this is a, a successful treatment for epilepsy? I think it might be a little bit um, too early to say this is a successful treatment for epilepsy, but I think we can look even as far back as the early 1980s when the first uh, clinical trial in humans was done down in Brazil with pure uh, CBD. Uh, and they showed some really quite startling results uh, where I think seven out of eight of the patients that tried CBD showed either remarkable or noticeable improvement in their seizure control. Um, there were even more case studies that have built up one by one over the last um, 20 or 30 years or so that certainly says this is something that warrants serious and proper investigation as a treatment for some of these hard to control epilepsies. And at this point, what do we understand about how it works, why it works? what we focused on mostly is how it doesn't work. Mm. Uh, we know how an awful lot of the existing anti-epileptic drugs work. Uh, they, they block certain channels and receptors in our brains. And we know that those drugs, those existing drugs, don't really offer any hope for that 35% of people that have poorly controlled seizures. So one of the first things you do when you're looking at a, a potentially new treatment is it makes sure that it's not, or try and establish that it's not working in the ways that the old ones do. Um, in terms of how it might be working as an anti-epileptic drug in these different cases, this growing number of cases, the jury is out as far as a definitive answer is concerned. There are potential targets that uh, the literature tells us about, all of which are plausible. Uh, but the work, I think, for scientists like myself over the next three to five years as more CBD is used in the clinic is really pinning down which of those mechanisms underlie these quite astonishing effects that are being reported. At a certain headline level, the story here is still medical marijuana for toddlers. Does that raise ethical questions? Uh, definitely for me. Um, if you look last year, there was a wonderful study uh, done in a New Zealand community that's tracked them across decades, uh, the whole, whole, uh, you know, the whole lifetime of these these adults, and they looked at marijuana use, and we're specifically talking about THC within marijuana here, the thing that gets you high. The only group of people that showed permanent cognitive deficits as a result of of marijuana use were moderate heavy users during childhood, well not childhood, but during adolescence. If we can, if you like, get the same benefit for the control of seizures from something that doesn't contain THC, so a cannabidiol, a CBD containing, only containing medicine or extract or whatever, that is far, far preferable. Let me ask a very non-scientific question. If the thing works, what difference does it make how and why it works? Not really from a, an immediate patient perspective. However, there's a larger picture to look at, which is that if you want something to go forward as a medicine, you need clinicians to be uh, willing and keen and uh, able to prescribe it as a medicine. And part of that confidence for the clinical community is understanding how it works. It's not a huge issue in the epilepsy community because if we look at a large number of the very successful anti-epileptic drugs, most of them have been discovered by accident and even some of the biggest sellers now, they don't have clearly defined mechanisms of action. But if you had an epileptic toddler today and the medicines weren't cured, the, you know, the generally accepted medicines weren't curing it, you would, you would use this extract? If that, if, that, if that were my child and knowing the risks from uncontrolled seizures, if I had something that controlled those seizures without any obvious major adverse effects on the child, that would be as my personal decision, I would do it. Um, and that's, as a, that's not as a clinical recommendation, that's as a, as a parent myself. 
Uh, the you know these children who are quite often having dozens of seizures every day, quite often they're going into a state called status epilepticus, which is a persistent state of seizure. This can be lethal. It can be it is life threatening. Uh, there's a condition that is genuinely called sudden unexpected death in epilepsy, where an individual literally dies. It's associated with epilepsy, but we don't know why. These, the risks of these things are dramatically increased in people with poorly controlled seizures. Now, if that were a child of mine and someone offers me a less than perfect but effective treatment, I'm going to say yes to it. Okay, Dr. Wally, thanks a lot. My pleasure. That will do it for us for tonight. We will fold things up. Hope to see you back here tomorrow.